For more information on tutoring, personalized video solutions, or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, check out MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. Previously, we mentioned that a protein would be digested into a bunch of amino acids and taken up from the intestinal lumen into the blood and eventually taken to the liver. So what happens to them when they get to the liver? Well, we need to get their carbon skeletons. So we have to remove the nitrogen, right, the ammonium ion, to give what's called, um, of course, the carbon skeleton. And we're going to get that via transamination. Okay. Now, the transamination, the general reaction is that we start off with an alpha amino acid, and this could be any amino acid, and we'll call this alpha amino acid number one. And we'll also start with an alpha keto acid, and that alpha keto acid is specifically alpha ketoglutarate. Okay. Now, what's going to happen here is that we're going to take the alpha amino acids, amino group and alpha hydrogen, and basically remove them from this amino acid and tack them on here at the alpha carbon of alpha ketoglutarate. And basically what's gonna happen is that the, the, the portion of, this portion of the alpha amino acid and this portion of the alpha keto acid, alpha ketoglutarate specifically, are going to sort of trade spots. And so what's gonna happen is that if this alpha amino acid loses that amino group and alpha hydrogen, it becomes this alpha keto acid, right? Instead of having the amino group and alpha hydrogen there, now there's just a ketone, right? Making it an alpha keto acid. So alpha amino acid number one became alpha keto acid number one. Now, when that happened, where did the actual amino group go? Well, the amino group and the alpha hydrogen went here onto alpha ketoglutarate. And when that happens, that turns that alpha ketoglutarate into glutamate, which is specifically an alpha amino acid. So that, that pink arrow there is showing that this alpha amino acid number one becomes alpha keto acid number one. And alpha keto acid number two, the alpha ketoglutarate, becomes alpha amino acid number two, which is glutamate specifically. So this is called a transamination reaction. And this is catalyzed by an enzyme called an aminotransferase or a transaminase. And it's often named, the amino transferase is often named for the starting um, amino acid. So for example, um, if we have alanine here at the bottom, this is our starting amino acid. It's going to be turned into its alpha keto acid, which is specifically pyruvate. And this is going to be catalyzed by an amino transferase, specifically alanine amino transferase, right? So it's an amino transferase named for the starting amino acid, which of course, in this case, in this example is alanine. Now, this is this general reaction up here is often depicted like this, where it just shows the starting amino acid and the carbon skeleton or the alpha keto acid that results. And it shows the alpha ketoglutarate like this becoming glutamate, right? It's not explicitly showing the structure, it's just to save space, because it's understood what's going on here, when we have alpha ketoglutarate going to, to glutamate. The question might be though, is what happened to the alpha amino group and the alpha hydrogen here? Where did they go? I don't see them. Well, it's not explicitly shown, but the amino group and the alpha hydrogen were attached to alpha ketoglutarate, right? It was transferred over there to produce glutamate. It's just not explicitly drawn or shown, okay? Doesn't mean that it didn't happen. So the net result of a transamination reaction is basically that the amino group, right? The amino group, oops, the amino group, right? The uh, NH4 plus group is transferred to alpha ketoglutarate from the uh, starting amino acid to produce glutamate. And the starting amino acid ends up being its carbon skeleton which was, is the form we need it to be in in order for us to oxidize it for energy. Okay, now this amino transferase or transamination re reaction uh, requires a cofactor that's often abbreviated as PLP. That PLP is short for pyridoxal phosphate. Pyridoxal phosphate there, okay. Uh, and I didn't show it here, but it's right there. Okay, so pyridoxal phosphate is a cofactor that is important for transamination reactions. 
fact, let's talk a little bit more about it. Pyridoxal phosphate, PLP. It is the coenzyme for transamination reactions. And it's actually, it comes from pyridoxine. Pyridoxine, which is specifically vitamin B6. Okay. So uh, vitamin B6 or pyridoxine looks like this. And pyridoxal phosphate looks like this. This is what pyridoxal phosphate looks like. So the difference really is that instead of having an OH up here, it has, um, instead of that OH, it has the phosphate group. So that is phosphorylated there. Um, and instead of having the alcohol here, it has an aldehyde. And uh, that's actually the reason for the, the name the name change, right? Pyridox AL, pyridoxal, um, things that end in AL, that is an indicator that there's an aldehyde there. And of course, that phosphate group makes it pyridoxal phosphate. PLP. So what happens during the course of the reaction is that pyridoxal phosphate will actually grab the NH4 um, plus, right, the uh, the amino group from the amino acid number one that you start with. It'll grab it from amino acid number one, and then it'll carry it and become pyridoxamine phosphate. And then um, again during again during the course of the reaction, that um, amino group is given up by that pyridoxamine phosphate to alpha ketoglutarate to make glutamate, which regenerates pyridoxal phosphate in the form that we we started with. Okay, so at this point, we've removed the NH4 plus from the amino acid, and we put it onto alpha ketoglutarate to make glutamate. And we've got the carbon skeleton. Now what happens? Well, that's what we'll find out in the next video. I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you and happy studying.